Welcome to the Five Phenomenon Podcast. I am your host, Shane Hayes, and coming up on this episode, the Big Five O episode. Uh, I guess we're anniversary. Um, I guess we're using the numbers here, anniversary. My big brother, Chris Hayes, and um, I made no secret that one of the model shows I've used for this podcast is uh, Mark Marin's uh, WTF. And similar to the opening riff and then the actual interview format, um, I want to say his anniversary shows tend to be kind of personal too. Like I, he would have his brother or his dad on. And th- those have always been some interesting episodes, even if some people might be inclined to skip in. Um, but first up, what I watched this week, I watched in a theater the Netflix movie Malcolm and Marie, written and directed by Sam Levinson, who, if I'm not mistaken, is Barry Levinson's son. And I won't join in the pile up that's been happening. I, I will say the letterbox reviews I saw were, were amusing and I imagine film Twitter's got some very funny takes, but I will say it was heartening to see uh, the biggest house at Showplace Cinema East was playing this, a black and white 35 millimeter shot movie that um, stars two really big current stars right now, John David Washington and Zendaya. And it's the movie was made super fast um, with a lot of interesting resources although it was small and and Sam Levinson say what you will about him he's a bold filmmaker he takes big swings and visually he's very bold and it it kind of made me feel like whenever uh, past episodes when I bitched about or worried what's going to happen in the future of film it made me start to realize a lot of it is just I'm worried job wise about what's going to happen to independent film which is where I mainly work but there's still always going to be a need for sophisticated stories with meaning. And so with that in mind, all the streamers and studios, no matter what they're do, going to do, it's not just going to be all lowest common denominator, big movies. Like, it's, there's still going to be artistic swings taken, I think. At least that's what I got from this, even though, yeah, I shouldn't really comment on the movie itself. It's, it, it, if you want to see it, go see it. Um, so a note about this episode. I thought it would be similar to the episode I did with my mom, Pat Means. Um, I wanted to catalog a conversation with a family member and maybe get stories that I haven't heard. And with my brother, I thought that might be more fun if we drank. And um, I Maybe I was just using excuse to drink, but uh, it the strategy would have worked if he drank more than I did, which is not what happened. Um, we tried to record this two weeks ago, and he didn't feel like doing it. And I even said something like, "Oh, I thought the whole point of this was to drink with the idea of like lo- get looser lips on it." And as you get l- further in the episode, I know drinking and putting out content is a very indulgent method. Um, I hope I hope you guys find some funny stuff on this. Uh, I will say, if you're looking for a reason not to drink, try recording yourself drinking with someone who uh, is not, get, you're getting drunker than they are. When you start hearing yourself slur and just get into... Um, I don't want to drink for a while after hearing and editing this, um, which also is the reason why this episode is shorter than the last few ones and doesn't have a proper ending, just because, as my brother described it, we took a break, and when we came back, I started speaking like Jabba the Hutt. So, there is that to look forward to, but um, for now, here is me and my brother, Chris Hazen. So we talked about this a little at doing this at McKinsey, uh, your eldest daughter, her um, birthday, it was two weeks ago. 
and yeah. we talked about doing yes. this there and mom was just like what are you going to talk about then and we we went over and we started but that's go- that's my whole that's my whole point you know well we went into it a little there mm. and then the other day i was at dinner with mom again and I mentioned this, and she again did this, like, what are you guys going to talk about? And there was that vibe of, don't, I don't, we don't have, We like, could spend an hour talking about Transformers, a movie we just, we just watched. So, I mean, you know, literally. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, exactly. We don't have these, like, Tennessee Williams-like secrets in the family. <laughs> oh, the dark secrets coming out. There's nothing. There's not much going on here, so. No, there is nothing. It's just, you know, typical yeah. growing up. Growing pains that, you know, every normal, yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, so, has. Wh- where, where, where do you want to start? Because, okay, in prep for this, we watched two movies. Uh, one we just finished, yeah, and we watched. There were two childhood movies that were pretty strong. I don't know. I, th- I there. I remember them as being strong movies, but like, I memory is obviously a little. It it's kind of funny you say that, and yes, they're very, you know, those were very big childhood movies. But at the same time, you know, that was back when we were limited on what you had to watch. You know, you had your your VCR, and of course, Dad had that collection. And it always that, seemed like we always watched it at Dad's house. It never was. We didn't really watch a whole lot of movies at Mom's. I I do want to get into this because the thing is, but, I want I want to get into a lot of stuff before I can remember because I have a very clear defined stuff of this, but you have four years on me right but i do remember watching obviously watching you know like like i said transformers and short circuit were two big ones those are the two movies we just mm-hmm. watched we, yes. we, we just finished transformers we tried to record this two weeks ago and we uh, it didn't work out but we watched short circuit short circuit and we, that, we actually introduced ethan to that which your, was awesome your, your eldest uh, your youngest, youngest son, son. Ethan, we yeah. Which how did Ethan react to it? He actually liked it. I was surprised. I thought he thought it was well. You know, watching it now, I'm like watching okay. it with him. He was, I couldn't tell what he thought of it. Well, you know, watching it now, of course, as an adult, you know, versus watching a kid, you're like, okay, I could see some of the '80s campiness that I loved as a kid, but now as an adult, you're like, okay, that's got some campiness, and maybe that's a little bit more of just being an adult, a little more disgruntled as an an adult well the trick of it all is like what movies got to you when you were soft when you were a kid and then like trying to introduce that to a generation 20 years later oh gosh i mean but times have changed so much that stuff that you know we'd almost consider campy now that were great movies your wholesome feel-good movies you know like short circuit where there's a happy ending you know and then you know you've got say today uh, well, let's take event. You know the latest Avengers. You know mm-hmm. the End Game and Infinity War. You know it was that was a dark, dark ending. Infinity War. Well, you know the funniest thing I noticed when, if I were just rewatching of Transformers. Mm-hmm. First off, okay, did you notice the title card at the very beginning of the movie? Title card. No. The very first title card uh-uh. of Transformers. It was it was Hasbro in Marvel. Really, Marvel was involved with the um, whenever. Whatever Japanese company made Transformers, uh, they came over and they when they tried to figure out a story, they involved Marvel with it. And they used like these big Marvel writer editors, uh, uh, Denny O'Neill and Jim Shooter, who were – they were big guns in the early 80s. And they were the ones that came up – Denny O'Neill is the person who came with Optimus Prime. That makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, obviously, I could see Hasbro reaching out to Marvel to try to write a movie – you know, a storyline that's long, longer than 30 minutes or 22 minutes. Well, it's not even that. The mythology. All mm-hmm. the mythology our, our childhood is based on is come from this shit. And, like, right. one of the things that, that was really also hitting me was based on an earlier episode with Ben Fritz that I did where his whole book is about Marvel's whole and Disney and a lot of the modern franchise idea and the building of universe is about... Okay, have you ever noticed in in Marvel movies everyone changes a costume every movie? Uh, yeah, vaguely. I mean, the costumes are very similar, but yeah, they similar. But, but I they, think they slightly just, slightly change from. I think movie. that's just them updating. It's, it's or like editing. it's like no, yeah. it's, it's like Black Widow having uh, blonde hair in Infinity War 
and then suddenly going back well, to where I mean, if you break that down, she had different hair in every movie. She had curly hair in, in Iron Man 2. She had straight hair in, what, Civil War? I mean, exactly. The one point of it was of short, this, one was long. I mean, Exactly. The point of this is, is you change it from movie to movie because you want to sell different toys from movie to movie. And the fact is Marvel is st- and Marvel and a lot of these franchises are still making the majority of their money selling toys. Well, yeah. I agree with that. And that's, I think that was, that was the big push back then. I, you know, with Hasbro, they were, that was the whole point of the producing the movie was supposedly they were just going to push a whole new line of toys, not just one or two toys here and there. It was a whole new line because you're, you right. killed off all your generation one and created all these new toys. Well, that was the thing. Characters. That was the thing you were pointing out to me when we were watching this. Because mm-hmm. you kept pointing out who was different, who has changed, who in the Autobots, who in the Well, Septicons. if you sit down and watch it and actually sit and look at how many people, or how many Transformers, the generation one died off or were transformed into different characters, you know, when Unicron transformed them. But it was, it was completely a toy-based decision on yeah. storytelling. Yeah, it was a money, it was a money thing. You know, Okay, when I was gathering our notes of what I wanted to talk to you with about, I kept coming back to like our early childhood and all the stories that like really inspired us. And I kept coming back to this fact that like they're all toy based. You're you're ruining my childhood mem- my my childhood movies I love now. Thanks. No 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 no. I don't. It, it's they are they are they yeah they were totally toy based. But you didn't know that when you were you know our age. Of course age. not. We were just like, oh my god, they killed off Ironhide. Well, I, it's a recurring theme of here of like a lot of the differences between the average moviegoer versus the critic moviegoer versus like the really sophisticated moviegoer is basically the amount of movies they watch. So like everyone is a really, I think everyone loves going to the movies. And like, so if you go to the movies and then you want to like extend those adventures in toys as a child, like... Like literally, if you if you didn't start to watch like a hundred movies for the rest of your life, that's one thing. If you then decide to watch another ten thousand movies and you then extend that toy vi- vibe to it, like that's a different thing. Yeah, but too. go back to our childhood, not necessarily you know today's childhood. But, I'm generalizing you know, this, but yeah, we, yeah, but go back to ours, and we didn't have we had toys. That was it. You know, you really to keep entertained back then. You either played sports or you play with toys of some sort. Okay, I'm going to come back to this, but let's okay. let, let's go ahead roundabout. Um, Dad made this joke at a uh, Christmas dinner. This thing, this fact that we've known our entire lives, but for some reason he decided to randomly mention at Christmas dinner, you were born the day Star Wars came out. Yeah. Yes, and we've we've talked about it. I've talked with my friends. It's always been a joke that you know I was born the same day Star Wars came out, and May twenty fifth, nineteen seventy seven. Right, right, and I don't know why that's you know there's no consequence. I don't there's no way in the hell that he was able to conceive me on that day that he's like, oh hey, <laughs> if we nine months from now there's gonna be an awesome movie coming out. He saw the trailer, and he, the the thing is that that's not that's not an impressive trailer, but at the same time, I'm gonna plant my seed. <laughs> <laughs> dad, dad went to Comic Con and just like I think there's something to this movie. I think if I plan it just right, I could be have a son on Star Wars Day. But the thing is, like you were born on the Joseph Campbell movie, so like you were born with this grand destiny of May twenty fifth, nineteen seventy seven. Well, you know that's a funny. I, I I never did understand why. Well, I mean, I do understand that it's, it's a it's a campy thing, but May the 4th is May 4th. But, you know, really the movie should have, you know, the Star Wars Day should be May 25th because it's the anniversary of the first movie. I want to say Phantom Menace came out somewhere near that. It's like May 21st or something like so, that. I don't know. But, you know, it's all, but, but everybody talks about May the 4th because it's, you know, it sounds great, but. Okay, well, um, let, let, let's, let's then dive in. Do you remember your first movie? Um... <sighs> The first one, I don't know if this is the first one movie that I went, but the first one I do remember, and we've talked about this a little bit, was Ghostbusters, and seeing it in the in the big screen, and and the reason I know or I distinctly remember that movie is because the library scene at the very beginning, um, you know, they were down at the in the what is it, the mezzanine or the the stacks or whatever, and the, the little it was was a ray and and. I, Bankman. I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's the library in Manhattan. I'm thinking of, but yeah, yeah. But they were down in the in the in the mezzanine or stacks, whatever it was, and they had that ghost, and she was a little librarian ghost, and 
and she kept saying shh, shh to him and they kept coming up talk to her and at the very end she turns into a giant you know goblin or whatever and scares them they take off running that's how the introduction comes in but i remember sitting on either i was i started on her on mom's lap or i moved to her lap at that point because it scared the living shit out of me and that's how i knew i saw that in the big screen because when you see that goblin explode on a big screen you're like I, I just that's the first movie i really remember seeing in a theater and i knew it was in a theater because it was so like just huge yeah well we're going okay my i have two candidates for first memories okay one of them is i vaguely remember we went to disney world at some point and i was in a stroller and some some photos i found fit that uh the other is this feeling like I cried and we left Ghostbusters. And see, I don't remember. I don't actually. I would have been I, three around that time. Well, that would have put me around seven if that was the case. But I don't even remember. You know, I do remember seeing that part. I don't know if we finished the movie, honestly. To be, well, be because, completely frank. Because very distinctly, I more remember that movie on home video. And the thing is, mm-hmm. I remember we would be in the living room. And... uh the couch, that couch survived forever. But for whatever... <laughs> Do you still have it? <laughs> I had it for a while. Where is it? Did you finally get rid of it? <laughs> I don't know. I had it forever. I don't remember where the hell it went. Um, oh, my God. We'll have to come back to that. <laughs> now, yeah. Um, but what happened was I remembered it was the Dana scene where Gozer came out of her, her, her sofa. Yes. And I remember I couldn't put my hand on the armrest because I was afraid a Gozer hand was going to come out on me. And I would get <sighs> yeah. afraid. I would yeah. run and it would always be, the kitchen would be dark. Mm-hmm. And then I look in the kitchen and I would always be afraid. I was going to see two red eyes looking at me. We didn't have a door to our kitchen though. Remember in Ghostbusters, there was a, that, that sliding door, whatever it was that, that didn't matter, and it had that. She had that glow around the door frame, and then that's you know the chair. No, went no, into no. The that kitchen. was her entrance. That was her. Uh, I thought that was the kitchen. Like it, the the Gozer came in through her apartment entrance. Okay. Like I, I, okay. I, I she, her kitchen might have had a door to it. But... I thought that were were the when they the the arms came out and grabbed her, and then the the chair turned. I thought I went into the kitchen. No, no, it went to the entrance because it okay. turned her to the entrance. Okay. And Gozer was there. I guess too. I never, I never have realized it then. But yeah, I just but that in the the what the eggs that were uh, self started cooking on the on the on the countertop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was a. That was a, you know, it was such a good movie. And, and But thinking back as, as a seven-year-old, that was probably scared the living shit out of me. You know, now you're just like, this is a great movie. You laugh at it. Is this your first movie, though, is what you're thinking, seven years I old? I really do think that was it because I just don't remember us going. You know, we spent so much time camping. I do remember a lot of that with Grandma and, and even sometimes Dad and Mom would show up. But it was doing a lot of camping with Grandma and Grandpa. Do you remember what mom said at Red Lobster whenever we started talking about uh, first movies? No. No, I don't think she She really... said you cried on her lap at E.T. E.T., yes. Okay, no, I do remember that now. E.T. And that's very possible I saw E.T. I do remember You seeing... would have been of age for E.T. Yeah, I, don't... I do remember seeing E.T., you know, and I do remember... But I don't remember seeing it actually in the theater. I may have very well have seen it there, but it was so far, you know... But I do remember the um, the big thing was the scary space suits, you know, when they were walking through the tunnel or the little plastic yeah, tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do remember that scaring the living shit out of me also, you know. And it was funny how those kind of movies, you, you remember the scary parts. You don't remember the good parts of them. Well, what's fascinating is, like, I remember mm. distinctly, because the E.T. was very infamous for staying off video forever. And by the time it came on video... Mm-hmm. It would have been like 87 or 88. I remember dad buying it. I remember dad distinctly buying it at Target when it was mass produced. And I saw it, I felt like, for the first time. But you're describing shit that, like, sounds like you do remember from a theatrical fear, viewing. It's, it's possible. I'm not saying I didn't. Like I said, the one that, you, you know, when you asked the question, I do remember. I do remember seeing Ghostbusters on the big screen because I remember this, like I said, the, the librarian scaring, you know, just jumping on it. It was almost. You know, it was so big, 
you know, that's the one I do remember of all the movies. The story I told you whenever you told me that was um, uh, Jason Reitman was telling this story recently because Jason Reitman's dad, Ivan, directed the movie. And he told Steven Spielberg that he was doing the uh, doing the newest version of it. And Steven Spielberg was like, that scare you're talking about. He's like, that's one of the top 10 scares of all time. I can see that. Yeah. Because I know, like... Ash likes watching a lot of the horror movies now. Mm-hmm. Ashley, your middle daughter. My middle daughter, yes. You know, for those who don't know. <laughs> Everyone listening. Everybody listening. Yeah, I know. I just it's automatically assumption. Yes, but, yes, fair enough. Um, but no, you know, and she likes watching the horror movies, but I'm I you know, you really realize some of the movies we watched were scary back then and it was scary legit. Like, take Claymation. You know, Claymation scares you living shit on me to this day, but take a CGI version of the same scenario and it's not it's just not scary it doesn't seem like but i don't know why maybe because we grew up with claymation and being scary well I, this goes to it maybe i've just found a reason to justify it but i keep thinking that like physical effects of the early 80s and body horror is my favorite genre but have i just found this like elaborate way of defining like why the ghostbuster scare scares me more than anything else <laughs> It's it was that traumatic when you were that young. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this comes to a thing I've I've been talked about a lot about here. Like literally, like the idea is like the stories and the movies that affect you are the things that hit you when your brain was soft. To use the Doug Stanhope phrase, like it literally is like the number uh, of stories. Like, yeah, I can see that. Okay, so let's go uh, going a little more to what you remember. Let's start with Star Trek. Okay. All right. Where do you remember Star Trek starting? I'm as far as watching Star Trek, it it's kind of funny because we really didn't watch any of the original series. We have still to this day. I like. I've I don't, seen a handful of them. I can't say that I I've, made an effort to try to watch them. I still haven't finished. And them. I've I've made some effort finish to watch them, but I I just can't finish them. I do remember watching the movies, obviously, and, and watching them mainly at dad's. But I do remember in 1987, whenever Next Generation came out, Dad made a big deal about watching this new show. That I really had no interest in, honestly. And then, what was Dad's big deal? He was like, "Oh, you got to watch this. It's a really good show, and it's a new series coming out based on Star Trek." And I was like, "Well, I didn't really, really, honestly, knew what Star Trek was. I mean, I, I think I inclined from maybe watching Star Trek two, and you know, Star Trek three. We didn't want. Here's the thing: we didn't want Star Trek two. Like Star Trek two is my favorite movie of all time, probably. And the thing is, like. I remember going to a sleepover and actually watching the ending for the first time. Like, we watched Star Trek 3. We watched Star Trek 4. Four. Well, and I, I swear. Star Trek 3, I Star Trek 3 Grandma Gaia, or Grandma Hazen had it. Grandma too. Hazen had it on beta. Beta. We I want to go into the beta stuff here in a second. Okay, okay. In a bit, but. The one beta, Max, we, that we still know about that's still probably floating out there working. That machine was indestructible. Yeah, I mean, like I watch, we watched Star Trek three so much. I mean, time, can, but and Grandma Guy would, also, or Grandma Hazen it. also had the HBO too. Yes, but we will watch. We would watch Star Trek three, and then we watch SNL, and then we watch wrestling when they were out there playing cards. Remember that uh, they would play cards till like midnight. No, I don't remember. That's what I want to ask you no, about. Okay, so so basically, you know, while we were spending so much time, we would sit in the front room watching movies is because that's dad and mom would go over to grandma's and they would play cards on Saturday I night. remember that mm-hmm. I, I it, my the other movie I wanted to talk a lot about I I remember more vividly is the beta grandma had of the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie which is a it was a Chuck Jones thing I don't I just remember I don't think they had a movie I just remember they had a bunch of different tapes of different there's a, th- cartoons so the the Bugs Bunny, Looney Tunes cartoons in the 50s, like mm-hmm. one of the great directors of that was a guy named Chuck Jones. And right. when they compiled a movie of his, they called it the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Chase movie. Okay. And after the fact, I started to realize that Grandma had just basically taped that movie because that movie had been released 
when they compiled them in the 70s, that's what she showed. And so all my favorite movies were those. Yeah, and I remember watching a lot of those when we were over there, but we would also, but I do remember that was when we would sneak SNL in, and that, you know, back then when. That would have been 84, 85, wasn't it? 86? Yeah, it, yeah. oh yeah, I've been about, around that time frame, but I remember that's when we started watching SNL, and of course I didn't obviously didn't understand any of the jokes. Well, one of the weird things is that when I talked to mom, Granted, I'm glad we've we literally. I'm pretty sure we're over the time limit of mom right now because mom's whole thing was like she couldn't remember shit, and we had to end up the conversation shortly. Yeah. But mom made the point that like SNL was a big part of all of our. Dad loved it. You loved it. I mm-hmm. loved it. I don't know if she loved it, but I loved it, and like is. <sighs> I, I just remember watching a lot, even whenever, um, after they got separated, we would spend the night at Grandma Hazen's house, and they put us in that back room, and we would stay up late watching SNL, and I was like, if I made it to midnight, I thought I, you know, had an accomplishment. The getting to midnight was a big deal. Staying up that late, yeah. That was a big but deal. I do remember when, before, after, uh, and I, it was funny, we were younger, actually, um, there was wrestling on, WWE was on after SNL. And I always watched, it would seem like we never got very far into it, because usually about midnight is when they were wrapping up. But I do remember watching, like, Hulk Hogan and, and Macho Man, you know. And I was never into wrestling, but I remember watching that after SNL. Uh, I, guess it was, I guess it was 14, I'm assuming. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I vaguely, I just, I can't get specifics. Yeah, I just remember, you know, we watched a little bit, and then we jump into Monte Carlo and head home. <laughs> Okay, one big childhood defining movie going memory for me. I think this is a mixture of a ton of or a lot of different ones because it, it. I feel like the night I watched this was also the night we just watched Transformers, which we just watched again. Okay. Do you remember when we first watched RoboCop? Oh. Now, I'm thinking the first time we watched RoboCop, we were up in Indianapolis with, you know, our cousins and watched it in their basement. You think we watched it in Indianapolis? Yeah, I do. I do. And the reason I think that is because um, I remember watching with Jason and April, which was our cousins, and at, you know, our aunt and uncle's house. Um, and I, I distinctly remember... The scene at the end where the 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 one of the back I can't think of his name the one of the bad guys gets the acid dumped on him and he's mm-hmm. walking around like melting yeah and then they hit him with the car and he like basically turns into a giant I don't know watermelon I guess like he gets splatters. ran over yeah no, splatters okay I think I can contradict you on this just because I remember we watched this before then but we watched it multiple times after then mm-hmm. and okay. one of those times would have been there. I, I know we watched it there because I, I every time I saw that scene, I was just like, that scene really made me queasy. Like, no other scene in movie. It made you queasy? Yes, just watching him, like, melting. Because he did this. And he was, yeah, he was he, like, he was like, help me, He was me, melting. Me. He, he was had melting. this radioactive melted thing. And yeah, then the and car like, ran him over and he like, splattered. Ah, you know, when yeah. he, was dry, he was basically dying. And then what, is it Robocop hit him with a car or something? Um, or was it Lewis? Lewis. I think I want to say his partner, Lewis, hit him. Um, and he basically, like, splattered yeah, because and that was the gag of the whole scene. Right. My my memory is I really am convinced is a hybrid of multiple times. Mom just basically decided she didn't wasn't paying attention to what we were renting. I don't know is that because I, I maybe in, in my memory, which I again I keep bringing up, memory is a thing that you 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 remake over and over as you mm. remember it. I remember it being we watched Transformers and RoboCop the same night because I remember finding Transformers way more traumatizing than anything in RoboCop. How? I mean, he had a freaking metal spike comes out of his middle finger, basically. You know, he would okay, sta- okay. He stabbed the guy at the end with it. Let's talk about this just because we rewatched this tonight. And, like, I think as a kid, I don't, first off, we never had Transformers the movie on, did we have it on VHS at some point? No, I don't think so. Because I feel like we watched it again at some point, rewatched it. But I do remember, 
And again, I don't know the time We had frame. RoboCop. We did have RoboCop. Yeah. Though. But I did remember, of course, this was later on, we would go to Premiere Video and get National tapes. Video. National Video. National Video. Before it was Premiere, it was National. Was it National? Yeah. Same building. They never did It's move. a fucking tan video right now. Is it a tan? Oh, God. Whatever. Is it tan? Oh, no. It would turn to a tan place now. Well, okay. This, I'm, is. this is how old I... They, we would go to... Basket Robbins was next door at the time. Back okay. then, we would go to Basket Robbins and get ice cream. Okay. And then we'd go next door and get, I guess, a national video. Get a videotape, and we'd go home and watch a movie. But I remember because it was like, we got ice cream and a movie. It was great. Well, okay. I don't want to dictate this. What do you remember? What do you mean? What other movies do you remember us watching? I really honestly don't remember watching a whole lot of movies until after they got divorced. And I just remember watching movies at Dad's house a lot. But even at Mom's, we didn't watch movies. Well, Dad's whole big thing was like we'd have them. He'd have us on Wednesdays and every and the other weekends, weekend. Yeah. And he'd want to rent something for us. Right. I remember at Mom's after they got divorced, I was... That's when I started watching MTV. I started watching videos. Okay. And I remember that because we would be, they would be at work. And I would, like, we had the big screen downstairs. Or, I mean, it wasn't really a big screen. It was a big TV back then. But I remember I was like, I can. I remember watching Plush, like, the first time on that Stone big Temple TV. Pilots? Yeah. On that TV downstairs. And they had a big, bit. Don had a bit, or stepdad. Don had a giant big screen TV. Thing. Yeah, it was probably you know it was one of the old like you know giant nice giant tube, tube probably weighed like two hundred pound TVs you know big screen back then. But I remember watching that and like then we you know I started watching more and more videos and and the VJs that were real popular back then. And then next thing you know you're like I'm watching Bush and videos from that. And then you know. Um, even Nirvana, just all these different, you know, that's when I really started getting into, actually really started getting into music is from the videos, not actually from the music itself. And then, then I started listening to more and more. And then I remember, because that's where I remember I got my, you know, a couple years later, I got my first CD player. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you were my gate. you're my big brother, so you're my gateway through all this shit. Yeah. But, I mean, it was really no... The story I was going to tell a second ago was that I vaguely remember my hybrid memory of this is that we saw Transformers the movie and RoboCop on the same night. And mom just let us rent whatever we wanted to rent because it was this weird, bizarre post-divorce, I am not paying attention to my children thing. And Transformers, and the irony being that Transformers was like way more traumatizing to me than... RoboCop was got by of RoboCop was almost a borderline NC seventeen movie and yeah. rewatching this yeah. with Transformers tonight. Here's the thing, like I remember thinking, I don't know if you know if you watched me while I was watching the movie, but like literally the first half hour of this movie still had me as transfixed as I remember because I think it's we okay our babysitter was our great aunt Arlene, uh, yes. And we watched Transformers over there. And well, tra- Transformers was in around 1984. I would have been around three or four. Right, but with Arlene, I remember. And, it's kind of the, and GoBots. I remember watching it with Arlene that she would watch her soap operas. We would watch until three o'clock. Until three. Until three o'clock. o'clock. She and watched. I remember, she and watched I, twelve or uh, one to three. We had lunch at twelve, and then at one to three, she watched her soap. She watched. She one would life watch to live. one life to live and all my and uh, general all hospital. My ch- Okay. Two to three. That All my children was noon. Yeah. And then One Life to Live was one to two. And from two to three was General Hospital. And at three o'clock, we got the we got the TV. It was great because then we got we it till three till four until mom got home. Or mom four thirty, yeah. They would dad would pick us up about four. He would get off four thirty, pick us up after that. But we I remember at least we got th- we got three shows in. It would be usually it was a Transformers. Um, there was always a Thundercats. GoBots. And GoBots, yeah. But I remember having my, you know, sitting on the floor playing Legos all day long and, and, and watching. But at 3 o'clock, I quit playing Legos. I would just transfix on the TV. Well, you had more uh, memories of a Maxi than I do. Yeah, and to hear stories from Mom, I, I'm it's amazing, I guess, I'm still alive. Because he would take us out, or take me out. To Alaska? 
if it would go to Masco's every once in a while, and he would put me in the liver in the in the family room, and get me a coke and some and some food, and he would go apparently would go in the bar and drink. I didn't realize this, but he would mow their grass for him. Back then, and yeah. The story she always told me was that they put you in the bar. I, I that was some like a, like I remember built up walking story. into the bar, but I remember him always would put me in the little the back room, which I guess at the time was the, considered the family room. But I also remember um, he had this big yellow like boat of a car. And it was so big that I could sit on the armrest with my head out the window when it was warm. And I remember we went to Kmart, which was used it is now. It used to be the flea market there on South Kentucky. It's now, now it's what our I think RC owns it and there uses a factory. But it used to be a Kmart down there off Kentucky and well now sixty nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was anyway, there was a Kmart. We would go to Kmart like like once a week. And we would do that and then we would also we go to Lamasco's and then another thing too was really cool is at the time when that railroad was still there, the trains would come by pretty much the same time every day. We would walk down and watch the trains go by. Really? Yes. Yeah. Maxine, you both love just watching trains. We watched trains go by. And I remember Arlene was scared because she thought a tra- I was going to get hit by a train. But it got so, we got so, I guess we had watched it so much that one time, I remember this, the, the train had stopped. I guess they, they were going really slow. Like they were just doing like, I guess, local deliveries. So they weren't like going very fast. But I remember one time the engineer actually stopped the train and would talk to us. And I was like, this is the really coolest thing ever. What did he say? I don't remember. I just remember, you know, this giant, massive locomotive sitting right in front of me. And, I, you I, know. I won't lie. I'm having trouble getting the, what is the location of this place? Okay. Okay. So, you know where their house was at, right? And that, that hmm. street went down to an end of, and it didn't actually. We are literally anymore. living on the same, st- we are interviewing this from Gum Street, which is the exact same street Arlene was on. She lived at 1137. And I don't know how I remember that. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. so that's so cool. Which was basically a half so a block cool. from Forty One. Well, anyway, at the end of the cul-de-sac or their street, there's actually now it's that um, in Evansville they have that uh, walking trail there now, but that used to be a train track, and it was an active line, and it would I guess it, I'm assuming it went down. Someone stopped at that because the thing is, they like, were going that... really slow. They would they saw us every day. We'd wave at them and they'd wave back at us. And at one day, the guy, the engineer actually stopped and talked to us. It was the coolest thing ever. How oh, you wow. you cannot remember how old you I, were. I had to be, you know, maybe seven, <sighs> six, something like that. I I don't know. It was young. I was definitely young, young. Well, I mean, Maxie died, let's see. 86. 86. So at the most, I could have been seven. I I have this memory. Or wait, of, no. I, at the most, I could have been nine. Sorry. Yeah, sure. But yeah, yeah. I have this memory of Maxie. There's this weird thing where I remember my early life of um, Arlene, Maxie, our great Nana on the other side of the family. Mm-hmm. I just remember who was nicest to me. And all three of those people were my favorite people. Like Arlene, she had to discipline us occasionally. So she was a little less. Arlene Maxie, never really was, though. She was a good, she took care of us, you know. And I just remember we would come there and she'd always cook us a big, big breakfast. And I always look forward to that because I'd go there and I'd have eggs and. You know, Big sauce. breakfast? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember that. I, I do. I remember even when I got older, you know, she was like, you want breakfast? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, older, I, I was probably, you know, she didn't watch us until we were old enough to take care of herself, so probably nine or ten. Did you ever see her whenever she was out on the river? Because the thing is, like. No, no, I'm talking about Arlene. Now, Nana, I don't remember her ever cooking. Oh, Arlene. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 Arlene. I'm talking about now, Nana, yeah, I remember she had moved back. Because remember when we first, as my my memory when I was younger, she was living with Grandma and, and Grandpa, but then she moved back to the house there on the river for a while. Dad always portrays it as she could win back and forth to the house. Like, I, I base this on right now, I am trying to archive a lot of well, stuff I, Dad has I given always, me of, as, of hers. As right? I got older, I always just assumed that's when it would flood out. 
down there and she would move yeah would have you like I, I i drive out there occasionally and mm. like it's i don't understand how it doesn't flood out because there's often. always there was always like a good you know she lived in river bottom so there's always like a good two months of the year that it was flooded it's on, not on even average. it's not even the consistency it's like the intermittent like like randomly it's gonna flood like it's just gonna flood out. right right and she would i remember dad saying stories when they were younger it's like oh they knew you know the water was coming up they would have to go get her get her car out of the area and they would take her over to grandma and grandpa's and she'd stay for a week or two until the flood water subsided the crazier stuff that dad has just given me is like these boxes of her archives where mm. it was after they had tried to put her in a retirement home and they tried to empty it out the the house and the, i don't know they dumped a lot of the stuff and there was this weird shit where like the lower level of whatever was on the river house was going to go constantly going to get flood so yes yeah they were always worried about that well and i remember dad telling me a story i guess whenever the house was first built that I guess they had just built the house on top of the stonework. It wasn't attached. It was just, you know, laid on there. And I guess at one flood, the house actually started lifting off the stonework. He told me that same story. And they actually ended up having to tear all that out after that flood and, and actually build a, a legit foundation where they attached the house to, it wasn't so anymore. I think they turned it into like concrete block or something where they actually attached to the house so it wouldn't float away down the river. But I just remember, you know, going out there and like the house was so far in the air and it had those, remember that staircase had the trap door, you open the door to the, on the floor and you go down to the garage and then there was a staircase outside too. I don't. Oh yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, she I've had, seen pictures, I don't remember any of this. She had a, I don't know if it was a porch or like her actual front room, but there was a staircase outside that was a normal staircase. Like it was, and there was a staircase out back, but then... Like inside, right on the inside of the door, I don't know if it was a porch or if it was like her actual front like living room, there was a trap door and you'd open up this door and there was another staircase, but it was it was inside, I guess I'm assuming just so it's dry. Because the other two were outside. And it was a staircase down into the, the which is really the, I guess the technically the garage, but it was the lower level that would get wet during the flood season. Yeah, I mean I've I've driven by it recently. This is the re only reason I know any of this mm -hmm. shit. Um I, I kind of wish, you know, they had kept that house. That'd be a great place for, um, you know, like a, a, a camp or something like that. But that was where they lived. I, I know, I know. That was the thing. It's like, I, I keep, every time I look at the photos, like, I keep thinking of, the, like, the flooding. And, like, yeah, they but, had to deal with that shit. Yeah, but talking to, you know, I, Jason Miller, you know, and all their their family, what they have bought and kept over the years, how much land and, and stuff they have over the years. Some of our oldest friends, Jason Miller and Casey Miller. <clears throat> yeah, they've got, you know, their their grandparents have bought tons and tons of acreage. And, you know, I'm like, just, it'd be neat to have something just, I don't know, something historical in our family that we kept through the years, you know. Yeah, I... And to me, that would be great. I would love it. I mean, that would be, you know, that was, that goes back to whenever, remember uh, the mom and Don had the cabin up in, in Illinois and they were going to, you know, when they passed away, they were going to will it off to us. And that was the big plan. And of course it never panned out, but I wasn't really, I really wasn't bought into that, buying that or having that place, but a place on the river like that, the old place like that, that would be really neat. I get that. I just think that, like... Um, All I'm saying is I had a lot of good memories out there. You do? Yeah, it was really neat, you know. They just... I think as an adult, it would be a great place to just go on the weekends and sit by the water and relax and decompress. So... What do you remember us being our first going to the movie theaters? Going we, to the, well, we would have gone to Showplace North, right? Uh, well, hmm. I I remember Showplace obviously North, but at the time, remember they had the little theater there where Showplace one through four. I worked yeah one that. through four. I guess you know I worked that place. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 
they had that one there at the time. And I do remember going there quite a bit. And then obviously going over to the other theater. I don't ever remember going to like the East or even South for that matter. Really? Mm-mm. Never. Mm-mm. Don't remember any of it. But I do remember going to the, you know, the four, the little, the little. Is North. this before you, is this before you left Purdue or after you left? Oh, I don't think I've. I know I haven't been to South after I got out of college. Jesus. Okay. Because mm-hmm. they recently, like, they, like it, it, it held on forever. And maybe, just only recently. Maybe finally closed. once, once or twice, I think, when Heather and I were, you know, first married, we wanted to. Heather, go. while are your, Heather Hazen, now your wife. My wife, yes. Yeah. Of how many years? 21. Blessed. Thank you. Um, yeah. 21 years, so. Um, we were talking about that the other day, actually, ironically, with some friends, because they were asking us, like, how long have we been together? And it kind of came up, like, well, we've been married for 21. She's like, well, one of our friends like, well, how long have you all been together? And we looked at each other, we're like, we really don't honestly know, remember, it's been okay, so long. Okay, 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 let, let, let's go back to high school. Um, okay. What did you watch in high school with dates? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, indeed! This is the question I'm asking you, dude. I, 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 mm, I don't mm. really remember. Um, at the time, I imagine you didn't go to too many because the weird thing I remember is that you took me to a lot of these. At the time, a lot of them, really. Yeah, because because one of the ones I remember distinctly, I brought this up to Heather recently of like. We went to the okay. We've done a few episodes for the drive-in in Rio, and my last before these episodes, my last trip to Rio was with you and Heather to well, see now, a double feature of Twister and Executive yes, Decision. Yes, and I do. But that was that actually wasn't planned. As the movie was the second part of that day. Do you remember we went to Lincoln and and spent the whole day there? It was because it was me, you. Um, Heather, and then I think Herman and maybe um, Amy was this. At the time, they were dating. It was friend, friends of ours that were. Um, this sounds we like all, it fits in and, a gap. And I remember that, I that because I got my first speeding ticket that day. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we we went to Lincoln State Park and we did the trails, hung out there during the day, part of it. And when we left, we drove up through Santa Claus. And we're going to go around through Rockport and go back to Rio. Well, anyway, when I got to Santa Claus, um, I guess I missed. Why would mom have given you me for the entire day? I That I don't know. Probably because she just. It know. was mom at the time? She was a very. I remember she was very much like, you need to take your brother with you. And you need to include him in your life type thing. So that was maybe one of those deals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember several times. But anyway. That, we that went, fits the pattern. Yeah, it fits the pattern, yeah. So we, anyway, we went to, I remember getting a speeding ticket because I had come into the little, the little town of Santa Claus. Was it your first speeding ticket? That was my very first speeding ticket. Wow. Yes. I yes. remember my first speeding ticket. This was yours? This was mine. And so we came in and I do remember like it was 55 coming down the highway and I guess the speed limit either dropped to like 40 or 45 or something like that. So I'm you know, toot along, probably 55, I don't know, maybe 60, I don't know, hell, I don't, I don't remember, but coming into town, and the cop was sitting there on the edge of town, this basically speed trapping, and I remember getting mad because this lady pulled out in front of me, and I honked my horn, and I was like cussing at her, and we get pulled over, well, she, she gets pulled, she pulls over with us, and I'm like, oh, she's gonna get a ticket for pulling out in front of me, Cop walks up to her, and then next thing I know, she leaves, and he comes back to me. He's like, license and registration. This sounds like, familiar. Shit. I remember this. I do remember this. I was like, how the fuck do I get in trouble? But he's like, you were doing 55 and a 45 or 40, whatever it was. And that was my very first ticket. Of course, you know, back then, $100 was like, holy shit, how am I going to pay for this? That period, yeah. Um, more especially than anything else. Mm-hmm. So, um, do you remember when we watched Star Trek Into Jar- Into Darkness in Memphis? In Memphis? Yeah. Really? Because the big deal I made of this is like this is the first Star Trek movie you and I had made, watched in 12 years. Because we watched Star Trek Six at Showplace North 
And Which I that... still think Star Trek Six is one of my favorites. Really? Yeah, and we can go back to that here in a minute. No, but... no, let's go with that okay, now. Okay. Why is Star Trek Six your favorite? Okay, it's it's a great like. It's a we, great movie. Uh, look, look, I've had Nicholas Meyer on this episode, like on the well, show. Okay, okay, I'm not going to even um, break down the 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 acting and directing part of it, but take sure. the Star Trek line itself. Gene Roddenberry created a storyline of just perfect utopian environment. Star Trek VI destroyed that by showing that there is corruption, even in an utopian environment, and I like that about Star Trek because you we were so used to, you know, this utopia even with, with you know with Next Generation everything was, for the most part, you know, you had a few issues here and there. For the most part, it was pretty utopian background and you know except for the you know uh you know then you had you know even in, like star trek 3 you know they went to safe spock and then they didn't get in trouble star trek 4 they didn't get in trouble they basically he human got nature dem- suddenly came in he got demoted to captain which he wanted to be anyway so three and four all the stuff he did you know stole the enterprise sabotage excelsior blah 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 he got demoted to captain, which he wanted, and he got a ship. He got a ship back. He got the Enterprise back, or the new Enterprise. Star Trek VI basically said there's corruption at the highest level of any, even a utopian government, still corruption. And I love that because it showed that there's just a darkness in it. That's why I really like even Discovery, the season three of Discovery. You bring up season three of Discovery, and I am not there yet. I I'm in. T- I have finished season two. I am I'm really happy that I have finished season two. I'm just not there yet, man. Well, I, without ruining it, it's just the Federation is not the Federation of the the of the next generation or even the original series. It's a darker Federation, and I loved it because it just shows. And maybe I, I don't know. Maybe it's a little cynical, but it just shows like how a society can really. One little thing can make things go bad, and I love that about a show. You know about it. I'm excited. About it. I will. I will mm-hmm. try to to finish it off. Um, do you want to finish off? What What was your teenage uh, R rated movies like? I I do remember when we started watching movies where cussing was a big deal. Cussing was so much bigger. Do you like? Okay, so here's the thing. Like I have talked about this with Dad. Um, do you remember? Uh, when you first saw Road Warrior, because like with Dad, I talked about this. Like he remembers when I first saw it, and like he doesn't make a big deal of it. And knowing how I would have reacted to it, he should have reacted to it just because like I don't know, like Road Warrior, like on a verbal level would have worked for me beyond how a war- verbal world would have worked for me. I just don't remember seeing, like, watching Real Warriors young, when I was younger. Uh, obviously, when I was older, I watched it, but I don't remember watching when you were younger. Hmm. Like, the only one I remember watching was Thunderdome when you were younger. And the only reason I... Re- Thunderdome is a shitty... It, really? I, but I re- the only reason I remember really Thunderdome is... Uh, Tina Turner going, walk up to the Thunderdome. That was the big, you know, her. That's the thing. That was the line. Thing. Yeah, and I just That's remember that of the whole thing. I don't remember actually the Mad Max movies in general. Uh, but no, I, as far as radar movies, I don't really remember anything specific. I do remember watching some movies over and over and over and over again because we had them on tape. No, Dad had the weird period where like he copied HBO. That was the weird thing. Mm. It was not weird, but it was. It was I weird. just remember he had that little wooden cabinet there in the hallway, and you open it up, and it was full of movies. That actually, you know what? That goes to a thing I want to ask you about. Like that was my. That was a big deal. That was a big fucking now, deal. I do remember. I don't know if this is what this was rated, but Barbarella. You had Barbarella? He had Barbarella. You watched Barbarella? I haven't watched Barbarella. You watched Barbarella? Uh, yes. I don't remember 100% of it. I just remember watching some of Barbarella. I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly what happened. I just remember the, the one, the, the scene that sticks out of my head is where she's laying in this giant, like, fur thing. And 
Then there was like I, I don't remember exactly. I just remember watching it, and he made a big deal about Barbarella, probably because it had was it Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Yeah, Jane Fonda. Probably because it was Jane Fonda at the time, and you know, in skimpy outfits. She, so that was probably why she was very was, skimpy. Yeah, that was but... probably why he liked the movie so much. But but I do remember um, watching that, and then I also remember when we were younger, his eight tracks out in the garage. Whoa, his eight tracks in the garage. Yes. <laughs> oh shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you just missed something. You didn't know about? You don't remember this? He had the eight track player out in the garage, and he would play Laura Branigan. Laura Branigan? Yes, all the time. What's Laura Branigan? It was, she was a singer, and I would have to look up what her song was. I just remember. Oh, shit. I, 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 I don't have a... Yeah, okay. And that's how we're ending this episode. There is actually a good 10, 15 more minutes of me slurring worse, repeating questions over and over, mystified by the concept of an 8-track. The Cannibal, the musical commentary where uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone got uh, drunker, this was not. Um, apologies to my brother. He is going to probably come on another episode. I have him tentatively scheduled for the 900th episode, but... Um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you're interested in more drunk outtakes, I can't imagine anyone's going to be that way, but, uh, leave a comment or let me know feedback wise with you guys want me to do more episodes like this, but I think I know the answer to that and no one's going to do that. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.